first thing we climb a tree And maybe then we talk Or sit silently And listen to our thoughts Illusions of someday Cast in a golden light No dress rehearsal And this is our life That's when the hornet stung me And I had a feverous dream Of vengeance doubt Tonight we smoke them out Cause you are here my century You are here my century You are here my century Oh, oh, oh. How's it going, guys? Nice to see Darlene and Shannon and Jason and Carrie and Billy Joe and Rachel and Ryan C. Welcome, everybody. This feels a little bit like romper room. I see you, Ashley Sulfur, Henry Johns, Teresa Greenchurch. Welcome, everyone. day begin You tilted my cloud I tilted in your hand The ring fell in real time That fell through the night No dress rehearsal When the hornet stung me And I had a serious dream Of a vengeance doubt Tonight we smoke them out Cause you are here my century You are here my century You are here When the hornet stung me again yeah. I had a serious dream Of a vengeance out Tonight we smoke them out Cause you are here my century You are here my century You are here Welcome, and uh, we're going to start very shortly. This is how to build a bunkie. All you have to do is follow these uh, little people here. They're moving really fast. And you should be able to pull it off really quickly. Just That's exactly the whole presentation. Just do what they're doing. Soap and I'll be your bubble. You give me love, I'll give you double. I can fly when I'm with. I'll be your eggs if you'll be my bacon. I'll make the dough if you'll do the baking. I can fly when I'm with you. Spend 
so much time to wait and for love I just don't want to wait with you You are the girl that I've been dreaming of Been true, baby Cause I need to know it's true My peas and I'll be your carrots I'll buy you a ring if you promise to wear it I can fly when I'm with I'll make the dough if you'll do the baking You get love I'll do the waking I can fly when I'm with So much time to wait and for love I just don't want to be with you You are the girl that I've been dreaming of Pinch me baby Cause I need to know it's true Peace and I'll be your care. I'll buy you a ring if you promise to wear it. I can't fly when I'm oh I can't fly oh I can't fly when I'm with you 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 you. you. Alrighty then. I'll turn that echo off. All right, everybody, can you hear me? I think I've turned the echo off. And uh, alrighty, everybody could comment where you're from and how you're staying warm this winter. That would be wonderful. We're using a wood stove to keep warm. It's actually, it's not been that cold. I'm gonna put my guitar away. And thanks for all the, uh, the kind words about the music. That's because I'm too cheap to uh, pay for hold music. That's something I wrote called Peas and Carrots. So, um, due to popular demand, a lot of people, I'm going to try to keep tonight's presentation really brief, really short, really quick, um, so that we can get to questions, because the questions seem to be the most fun part, especially for me and for the audience as well. So, uh, just a reiteration of, of the schedule. Um, we're doing how to build a bunkie tonight. It's going to be fun. And then on Thursday is bunkie essential. So I'll go into kind of more details about like specific things like roofing and all the stain and things like that. But today it's just kind of generally, what's it like to build one? Um, and then next week, um, on Sunday, we're going to talk about how to earn income with your bunkie. If that's something you want to, you want to pursue or kind of open the, um, my, my checkbook and my pocketbook and my, uh, my, I guess uh, finances and stuff and explain how I do it here a lot of other customers did it last year and we can just tell some of their stories and then on Tuesday is like how to have the best bunkie on the block which is a lot of our partners um, like Sunmark composting toilets and VicWest roofing and a lot of the cool things you can add on to your bunkie to make it even better and then if there's one you can tune into other than the contest close which is su Sunday the 16th it would be the Thursday the 13th please tune into that one it's the reason why Bunky Life exists it should be a very meaningful stream. So please come to that one for sure. Oh, have we fixed the echo? We should have fixed the echo now, right? Uh, if you could comment where what the echo is going, where it's gone, it should be great. Okay, the echo should be gone now. Um, and so this is our, tonight's agenda. Welcome everyone. And we're gonna have some quick tips about um, how to get the most out of this live stream and make sure that no one gets um, overwhelmed. Mitch says he's not hearing echo. That's great. Okay, good. All righty. And then now we'll go from there. So the tips are, are the same as last week or not last week, whatever the last thing we did was. And that is if you could kind of hold your questions and your comments until the Q and a time, which is going to be as quickly as we can possibly get to it. That'd be wonderful. Um, just because 
the questions can get backed up really quickly for me uh, watching them come in every bleep 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 every second so if you kind of hold off to it just a little bit um, that would be wonderful and then if you could we'll open up questions feel free then but if you could wait just hold off a little bit and uh, and see if your questions have already been asked and please don't repeat them I want to answer every single person's question I don't want to leave anybody left out but if you keep repeating your question you're kind of bumping the line and it's going to get annoying for everyone including myself so please do not do that okay so tonight we're talking about how to build a bunkie okay and so um, I want to go right into that the first thing you need okay when you're building anything is a strong foundation and that's a question we'll often get um, so let's, let's talk about how to do that do it right and do it once that's that's the bunkie life motto family first is never one of our mottos but do it right once that's probably the best thing I, I'd recommend so here's an example of some of our customers foundations that's a, a pretty stellar one right there and what what we recommend is some crushed gravel something on the ground and then either patio stones or deck blocks that's the simple easy way and then on top of that you can put these little pressure treated fence posts this is a pretty good I'd say overkill foundation here's another example of foundation these are just patio stones and deck blocks simple easy not too hard um, this is another example of a very overkill <laughs> um, super foundation this is someone that that knows what they're doing um, here's me doing my own foundation uh, the very first bunk I ever built and it's as you can see just a couple patios or uh, those are cinder blocks they're like two bucks each or something like that and then just fence posts and then the actual kit itself comes with, I'm not sure if you can see my, my cursor, but those green pieces, those are pressure treated floor joists and those come with every kit. So you have the basic idea. Once you get the, um, the blocks down and then put something flat on top of that, you can start building your kit. All right. And then with every, per, every order, we'll send out well ahead of time a foundation plan. And it might look something like this. I think this is our 2018 or 2019 Bucky. And it just shows you where to put your your fence posts or your um, all the little red dots there are where to put your cinder blocks or sono tubes or whatever you want to do. And there's many ways to do this, but I would recommend if you have a relatively flat space, do something simple like this. This actually wasn't that flat of a space. I had to dig into the hill, which is not fun. Um, so that is the basic idea for foundation. I'm sure there'll be questions. We'll take them at the end, but you don't need to pour a cement pad per se. Um, you don't need anything too fancy. It's basically like building a really um, uncomplicated box or even just laying fence posts on patio stones. It actually is a, another way to do it. If you type in Bunky Foundation into YouTube, there's lots of videos of me explaining some of our different builds. It's, it's, no, it's actually the hardest part of the build. I will say this. Our foundations usually take 40% of the time. So if you can have that done when your Bunky arrives, you're ready to go and you can usually build so much faster. So... Um, the foundation, I don't want to make it sound like it's super easy. It is easy, but it's uh, it's way more difficult than assembling the kit itself. Now let's go into why our kits are awesome. Um, I'm just going to show a video. There might be sound or not, but I'll narrate what's going on. So here's all our kits. And this is a smart person that laid out the kits and counted all the pieces. And I think he might even marked them and numbered them and stuff. And so you can see as he goes through the kit, everything's pre-cut. All the corners are pre-done there, so they come together and snap together super easy. And that up there is a, is a gable end, and the window will pop in that hole there, as he points out. Um, so this, per this very smart customer has got everything all spread out, counted, which is what we recommend when you get your kit. You have to take apart the package and see this. And you'll, I'm going to pause this really quick. So you see... Um, looking closely there, you see those two little ridges, three ridges? What those are are tongues and grooves. So the top of every bunky board has two tongues, and then the bottom of every bunky board has three grooves, and they come together like this. Don't sexualize that, guys, but that's how they come together. Boom. And um, that pr produces a very, very, very tight seal. Um, I wouldn't say airtight, but, but very, very tight. And so those come together like that. All the individual long pieces come together like that, tongue and groove. Um, and uh, that produces a seal. And the corners dovetail together. Um, 
as you can see, as, as you'll see. And here's a person, here's an example of a foundation that's got laid, and now they're starting on the first couple pieces. They've got their um, floor joists in, and then they're starting on the thing. And then this is how they, they actually come together. I'm gonna get my stupid face out of the way. Um, so there's the kits. You can see them. All you do is pound the blocks down. Some people will screw the corners with a screw. Some people will not. It's, it's up to you what you want to do. And then the next board just kind of goes on top and the corners dovetail together like I was talking about. And you take a mallet or a hammer and a pounding block and just pound it down. And once you start doing this, it really flies. Especially if you have this many guys working. This is a lot of dudes. And pound it down like that. And you can usually get this this part of the thing done quite fast until you have to get high enough that you need ladders. That's gonna be like a matter of like 15 minutes. You can keep going. So you guys get how that's coming together. That's kind of one of the advantages of our technology, and the way that the kits come pre-cut and ready to go for you. All right. Um, and then people often ask about the windows and everything. Well, here's the windows come in the kit as well ready to go and they slide in kind of like this. So this is an example of one of our older kits. And the windows just kind of slide into place. Um, and they're already pre-hung on most of our kits. If that makes sense. That's how the wind and the door the door also comes pre-hung as well. So you just we put the frame in um, prior to this video being filmed and then build the kit around it. So if you if you know how annoying it is to get a door to swing properly, as long as you have a nice foundation, do it right once, um, then everything else is going to swing really nicely and line up really well. Alrighty, so that's kind of what makes our uh, our kit so awesome to build and so quick to build. Now, I should have said this at the start of the presentation, but if you don't want to handle this project, maybe you've got um, more um, money than time. And I didn't relate to those kind of people until this past couple of years, but if let's say you have three small children in your house and you need someone to build it for us, we can arrange that for you guys uh, and have it kind of done for you build pro um, project. Uh, Lisa asks, are they self-cleaning windows? They are not. <laughs> Good question. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the build process. And um, most of our customers find they can build our smaller kits in about two days if they really hustle and they've got everything ready when it shows up with, with three or four people to help. Um, and our new kit is a little bit more in depth, but we did manage to build it myself and a few other guys in one day, but we had the foundation ready to go when it arrived and, um, you know, I stained the floor the next day. So I guess we could say one and a half days. All right. So that's kind of the idea behind the build. The tools you'll need, as you may have seen from the videos are m plenty of ladders, a level, some big hammers or mallets to pound everything down, a drill to, if you want to screw the corners. Um, and some type of a, a hammer or nail to nail the floors down. The floors are tongue and groove, uh, just and same with the roof decking boards that come with the kit. Um, here's a good question. Do the windows open? So most of the windows open. In this particular kit, this is our older kit, those side windows don't, but on our new 2020, every single window opens. So, yeah. Alrighty, that's kind of the idea. Let me, let me go into a few stories and then we'll get to questions. So I want, oh, I don't want to reveal that awesome picture. So I'm going to tell you guys a few stories of some of the people that built it themselves. So first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about, this is J and D. I'm going to read their story because I don't want to, I don't want to mince their words. So our property is on an island. So there's a bit of coordination and volunteerism to get the material to where the bunkie was going to be constructed. First we had to have a large boom truck loaded in, take it to the marina where we had to rent a barge. We transferred the skid to the barge along with half a dozen friends and we made our way to the island. There we had to dismantle the pallet, as you can see here, and carry the contents piece by piece up a steep incline. No offense, but I've, se I've delivered and <laughs> installed steeper inclines, but that's pretty steep. Um, we built the foundation the week prior and everything fit perfectly. The measurements you provide were spot on. By the end of the first day, we had the walls, windows, doors, floorboards, beams, and the loft floor installed with all of our corners screwed together. Thanks for that tip. The next day, we installed the front deck, roof boards, and the fascia boards. 
The following days we stained, cocked, and screened everything and put the steel roof on. These items were brought over on a second trip. So there's them counting their pieces like good quality bunky lifers. There's the finished product there peeking over the hill. And that's the bunky beauty that came out of the result. So that is a great story. We absolutely love it and cannot wait until spring so we can paddle over and enjoy it again. All right. Um, so thanks so much. That's from Jones Falls, Ontario. Um, here's another cool story. This is one of my favorite bunky lifers. Um, not that I have favorites, but I do like Virginia. Um, so let me just show you Virginia stuff. Virginia, it has the coolest bunky. I like your story too. So I thought about six years ago that I would like to have a she shed. We live in the country in an old farmhouse on 10 acres. I looked at prefab garden sheds, but wasn't very impressed. My hubby Eric said if I designed what I wanted, he would build it for me. It was a lovely gesture, but it was never going to happen. Um, so I guess it was in 2018 someone shared Bunky Life with me on their page, um, and there was some of the features of the old model I liked, and some of the 2018, but it just wasn't quite right. Along came the 2019, and it was perfect. Eric looked at it and said he couldn't build one for the cost of the kit. The two days to build appealed to him. Um, and there's, I should have been showing more photos because they're so cool. This is what they did with all the, this is the, their loft. And they just, de they decked this out to the nines. It's such a cool bunky. And it's like kind of moose themed, but kind of funky themed. And this is the best photo ever. They put up at the top there. Everyone loves that moose, as myself included. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the she shed version of the bunky story and uh, Virginia is a super nice awesome client thank you so much for sharing your photos I want to share another one this is kind of a story that I'll so I'll often hear from people why don't we just build it ourselves right and I think you probably I, I don't know if Eric was 100% correct but you know you might save a little bit of money if you just buy the materials but I think there's a case to be made for what is your time in going to the hardware store 13 times making all the cuts um, you know, having to do all the planning, all that. I think there's, there's something to be said for that. And so I want to tell you the story of the Junkie Bunkie. Some people remember this from last year. Um, so the people that owned the Junkie Bunkie, they bought a bunkie from us. So during the contest, they would always complain about the Junkie Bunkie that was unfinished. Here's the story. Uh, this is from Taylor, Taylor out uh, near Ottawa. The Junkie Bunkie was quite the adventure. We saved up just over $2,000 and thought that would be everything we needed to build our very own little bunkie to live in on the property. However, once we actually went to the hardware store and purchased all the materials, individually strapping them to the roof of a minivan and put in the back of a minivan, we just bought and brought what we could each time. We didn't realize the cost of all the materials and we would need treated wood to withstand the elements, which was way higher than we intended. We started to assemble with everything we had so far, and then before we knew it, the weekend was over and our building team had to get back to their lives at work, leaving us with what is pictured. We then didn't know how to properly pitch the roof and have the loft up in it, and we had no professional or experienced help when it came to that particular part. Our funds and time then ran out, leaving us with a foundation and a frame wrapped in tarps and living out of a tent for three months. <laughs> now, Taylor volunteered this story to me. It sounds, sounds like I'm mocking her. I'm not. I, I, I can appreciate that because... Inside of every dude, myself included, there is the guy that wants to like cut down his own trees and saw his own lumber and build his own log cabin with his bare hands, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with, with doing that. And if you have the skill to do that, great. I can just admit to you all that I do not have that skill. That's why I bought and, and manufactured bunkies because they're, they're easy enough for someone that's, you know, a seven... 6 out of 10 handyman kind of guy to build and it looks great and it finishes perfect um, so that's kind of the, the the main argument yes you might save a tiny bit of money if you buy the materials but they're not going to finish as nice it's still going to look like a shed on the inside like we talked about yesterday and if you pay yourself even $6 an hour uh, if your time's worth more than $6 an hour it's definitely a time and cost savings to go with a, a kit uh, preferably a bunky kit a bunky life kit but you know I think the kit thing actually makes a lot of sense. So that's kind of um, the stories. Oh, I have one more story because, you know, ultimately, why do we do what we do? Well, we want to provide families with extra space to make more meaningful connections. And this was my one of my favorite stories from last year, too. We only got one picture, but it was a story of um, a grandfather that bought a kit from us towards the summer. It was in the summer. 
and they and him and his grandson together built it. And this is their this is their their photo. I'm gonna share it with you guys. This is them in front of the photo, and you know this is the bunkie that that they built together, and it's always gonna be that story, and um, it's always gonna be a legacy of something that they did together. So if you do have the handy ability and you want to take a crack at building it yourself, we haven't had any single customers fail to build it themselves this whole past couple of years. Um, we're here a phone call away if you run into problems. We have videos for every single step of the way and we have instructions as well. Um, and so whether or not um, we build it for you or you guys build it yourselves, the important thing is that you have that space and you can have that um, that place to go to, whether it's to connect with yourself like the She Shed or it was to connect with your grandson. It, they really are a really awesome spot to kind of escape from the day-to-day -day grind and just, you know, be together. That's ultimately why we do what we do. So I won't belabor the point, but that's kind of the over of the, of the build process. And I want to get right to questions because that seems to be um, what everyone says is the, is the funnest thing. So um, if you could, Let's just go through the questions, start firing them away. So I'm going to sh shove in a little and um, we'll go for it. Yeah. Okay. So if you have any questions and they haven't already been asked, go for it. Oh, this is, this is a good one. Laura says, do you have any favorite product for staining? Yes. Sansin, S-A-N-S-I-N. -S they make a log home stain and they're awesome and they're Canadian. Uh, we've done an interview with um, their, some of their people over at Bunky HQ. And I would totally recommend them. Teresa says, hope you and the new baby are getting plenty of rest. Thank you, Teresa Marie. Not really. <laughs> Not a lot of sleep happening. Uh, cool. Oh, here's a good question. Jay Chalu says, what is the estimated cost of your team building it? Um, so we... We don't like to give an exact number, but as a ballpark, um, the the larger kits are like started around three thousand um, dollars. The smaller kits maybe a little less than that um, for for labor for labor and materials for the foundation and labor and materials for the roof. So that that's like a done. Don't have to think about it. Price um, as as that's a general rule. What we do is we connect uh, our great uh, ca carpentry teams with our great clients. We connect you guys together. We don't make any money on that. We just want to connect you guys together. Um, in our different areas. Um, so, you know, if you live up in like past Thunder Bay and it's really remote, it might be a little more than that, but that's a good kind of number to think about is around three grand for most of our kits. All right. But great question. Yeah, I think I did. Will you come to play at someone's grand opening? Sure. Yeah, I, I do run uh, an entertainment company uh, on the side as well. We do mostly weddings, but we also do like Honda... Honda's Christmas party and things like that, like big, bigger events like that. Oh, here's a good question. Sarah, can you fit a queen size lengthwise in the loft? I believe so. I don't know what lengthwise means. Um, but you can definitely fit horizontally for sure. The new loft, you could fit it anyway. Like on the 2020, it's so huge, you could fit a king size bed up there. Uh, I gave a cement, I have a cement pad, I assume you're demanding to say, yeah, you can put it on a cement pad, that's totally fine too. It's just a lot of work. Regis, what is the R value of the walls? It would be whatever the thickness of the wood is. Most kits, it's about that thick. Um, but they, they do hold heat pretty well. You should check out um, Can You Live in Your Bunkie, uh, which is an interview my daughter and I did with one of our bunkie lifers. And uh, they hold heat pretty well, provided you insulate the roof and you insulate the floor really well which is kind of to Laura's question here, can it be insulated? Um, not to like a full, like, you know, R31 building code standard, but is it, could you make it work for four seasons, Lisa asked? And I would say yes. Prior to meeting Dan this year, I would have said maybe, but this year for sure, yeah. Has anyone ever tried to join two bunkies? You can't really do that with the way the kits come together. Uh, not possible with our kits, um, but if you want a custom super bunkie, let us know. We do larger kits. Uh, there, that would be a permit required situation. And they tend to really escalate in price. So if you're thinking, oh, 100 square feet, that's roughly $10,000. 200 square feet, that'll only be $20,000. It doesn't always work like that. Has anyone ever attached a kit to a trailer? Yes. 
can we build a small powder room right beside it? That's the way to go. If you're thinking um, I need a bathroom and a bunkie scenario, then I would do bunkie. And then we have this little tiny, nice little six by six one. It's called the bathroom bunkie. And then it's a companion thing. They both don't need permits, provided your bathroom has a composting toilet. You can kind of make that work. Can your bunkies be insulated? I mentioned that earlier, Brooke Doll, but um, I'd say kind of. Uh, check out that video on our, our YouTube and our Facebook page about the um, Can You Live in Your Bunkie, I think it's called. Um, did you build the bunkies at Santa's Village in Bracebridge? No. Should the interior walls be treated with something? Um, not necessarily, but it's not a bad idea to stain them uh, with a clear coat. I did that on all my bunkies because then if there's paw prints on it and people brushing against it, it's a little more protected, but you don't need to. Vance. That's a great question. What got you into building bunnies? Um, I'm assuming you mean bunkies. Uh, well, Vance, for us it was we have in-laws very far away, like three, four hours away, in-laws and outlaws, And so my, my parents were having to stay on the couch, we had a crappy blow-up mattress that we were making them stay in. And so for us, the bunkie was was a way to provide space so that our you know our grandkids could have their grandparents in their lives. So uh, that was the, the initial itch that scratched for us. And then we started renting them out on Airbnb. And then people really started enjoying them and, and asking, you know, can you make me one? And it kind of grew from there. And then uh, in 2018, we did a contest similar to this that was much smaller. And uh, it really went crazy. So that's kind of the, 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 the story arc of how it's all come together. Lori. Do foundations ever settle and cause problems? So far, I haven't heard of any problems. Mine have been up for five years and have been fine. Uh, if you have any water sitting around your bunky issues, then you want to make sure you have gravel underneath all your, your patio stones or maybe go with sauna tubes that go beneath the frost line. That's, that's another option. Um... Because you don't want to have any fro freezing water, freezing and lifting things. That's that's when you have problems. I'm lucky that my bunkies are all at the top of a hill and everything drains down for the most part. Wendy, can you show us a picture of your bathroom bunkie? I'll I'll reply to this later and I'll I'll provide you a link to the the page. Oh, okay, this is a good question. What typical percentage of pieces are warped or damaged? Are there spare pieces? There are not pieces, not spare pieces. And this this year so far we've had zero. Um, like the broken pieces or or uh, or warped pieces, you know. Some I mean, it's a wood product, so sometimes you need to kind of hold it down and maybe screw it down. But the the kits come kiln dried, dried kiln dried, so everything's pretty uh, pretty not going to move too much. Now over time, the kits kind of swell and shrink, like we mentioned last last stream. But overall, they stay very very rigid and uh, and you know like any log cabin. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of the ideas. Yeah. Um, we, okay. Here's a, let me, this is, I'm gonna go back to this question. I hope this person's not on the live stream. I will embarrass them, but I'm not going to mention them by name. So I had a call. I was on vacation, um, in August or September for like a weekend. Uh, and I got a call, uh, Dave, uh, well, I'm missing this piece for the bunkie. And I said, did you count all your pieces? That's step one of being a good bunkie lifer, counting all your pieces. He said, yeah, I can't find it anywhere. Said okay, well I'm, I'm on vacation. I'm gonna I'll leave a little early tomorrow. Get back. I was only like in Barry. It was not too far. So I drove home, cut a piece for this guy out of our our larger spare pieces. Mailed it to him express post because when you when you don't have a piece, it's annoying because you can't continue with the bunkie. Mailed it to him. Oh hey Dave, uh, yeah I found the piece. Okay, so I saw a piece in half, a big long piece in half for the guy, and uh, got it to him. But at the end of the day, uh, that was his error, not mine. So overall, no errors on our part. Knock on wood, uh, and hopefully not moving forwards. Oh, here's a great question from Laura Hunter Hahn. It's gorgeous. Save me from the overcrowded cottage and the weird freeloading family. I can't really fully save you from your weird freeloading family. That's a, that's a gift um, I can't free you from. Wait, it comes with a lock and key, right? Yes, it does come with a lock and key. Comes with several keys, and each bunkie has its own lock. Um, oh, Jackie, does it need a subfloor on the foundation? It comes with the the pressure treated um, subfloor um, joists. All the kits come with that. Q 
Could a second door be put in to put a walkway to a bathroom bunkie? Yes, could be. It would be a, a carpentry job. That's when you're getting into a custom job. Um, and, and you need a, a relatively handy guy to pull that off. And keep in mind, once you connect anything else to a bunkie, since our bunkies are just under that permit size, then you've got a, you've got a permit situation on your hands. It's a good question, though. Oh, here's a great question. We are water access only. That was similar to the story I told earlier, right? What is the approximate weight of the bunky package? Uh, it varies on the kit. The 2020 is quite heavy. It's like 3,000 pounds or 3,500 pounds, something like that. Um, but around 2,500 pounds for most of our kits. So email me if you want the exact specifics, but um, it's they're heavy. It's a lot of wood and windows and doors and stuff. Okay. Does the foundation plan include a porch? No, you can enlarge it. Uh, but once again, once you make that larger porch, then you're in a technically a permit area because it because the Ontario building code is your footprint. So, um, but yeah, lots of, almost half the customers do that. And I can, I can only advise you to consult your local bylaws. Is it necessary to caulk each plant? I'm assuming you mean plank if you get a lot of rain and wind. Um, it's not, we always recommend pl uh, caulk the corners. That's kind of the weak spot. If you have a driving rain on one side of the bunkie, you can always, I would just stain it really good. Uh, and, and I mean, because of the way the tongues and grooves come together, you, there's not a lot of water penetration on the, the sidewalls. If you're going to have water penetration, it's going to be in the, the corners. And that's why we recommend caulking, 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 caulking. Uh, I think I answered the sub four question. <laughs> Lori Renan, do you recommend metal roofs? Was that a sarcastic one? Absolutely, because the motto of Bunky Life, do it right once. Uh, if, you, if you put on a metal roof, you're going to spend maybe two or $300 more than shingles because we're talking about very small areas, right? So a couple hundred bucks tops. They're easier to install. You can insulate underneath them very easily. Um, and they'll last forever. So why not? Everybody last year that put on shingles said, Dave, I probably should have put on a metal roof. If you've never done a metal roof, it can feel intimidating. I've done both. The The metal roof is easier to do. It's it's You just need a, a, a cordless drill, like a, a little battery-powered drill. It's all the tools you need. It's it's really not that hard. Um, so if you, if you can push that budget another couple hundred bucks, please do so. Ah, here's a good question. If two bunkies were connected and the breeze between the two, would you need a permit? Also, would you provide a roof design for it? About the breezeway question, I don't know. So call your local mafia members in, in your town. Um, I would assume if your footprint's connected, though, you don't. I can see their argument that you have a big, long thing. Would you provide a roof design? Oh, we provide... What we provide with all of our kits is the roof schematic, and here's what you need to take to order your metal roof. I don't know if that was the question, though. <laughs> How long does it take to build one in beers? Uh, we find a uh, six-pack will usually get... No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, depends on how many, people, how many boys you got and depends and girls. And depends on their alcohol consumption. Uh, you, if you're guesstimating one beer per hour, um, it takes approximately four people, we'll say 12 hours of work, 48 beers. That's just off the top of the dome. Okay. Oh, here's a great question from Gary Newman. Are solar panels an option? Yes, they are. And we're going to talk about that uh, probably in Bunky Essentials or Best Bunky on the Block. I have one on one of my Bunkies, too. Are there Bunkies where the upper floor covers the porch totally? There's no porch on the Bunkies, right? The, it's just the, the footprint. So any porches you'll see in the photos, those are things customers added on. So you can build that, um, or a lot of times people can screen it in, um, but you'll have to you'll have to, um, you have to do that on your own. So how long does it take to build a basic one? So a basic one might be something like our summer cabin or our no loft model, and that's a day. That's a day job with three people working hard. Oh, Austin says, do you sell bunky t-shirts or hats? Great question. Uh, this shirt, oh, I'm not even wearing my shirt. I threw, it's, got, it's hot in here. I took it off. Um, our bunky shirts, we don't sell them, but I, I'm going to be putting out a bunky life book. 
Um, and uh, it's going to be pictures of everybody's bunkies and the stories I've been kind of alluding to, um, and kind of our personal story, which I'll share in uh, a couple of week, couple of days. And the plan is that that book will be like a coffee table book, similar to like a, a book that a lot of our customers bought called Cabin Porn, which is a not the most family friendly name, but it's like you know cool pictures of bunkies. Um, so we're going to sell that book and we're going to donate all the proceeds to charity. Is the plan? Um, so keep in mind about that, and maybe we'll do shirts too and hats. I'm not sure. But thank you for asking. What's the secret word? I have not mentioned it yet, but great question. Once assembled, can it be easily dismantled and moved? I would say uh, the bunkie, if let's say building the bunkie is, you know, 10 out of 10 in terms of easy, then deconstructing is probably 6, 5 out of 10. It's not fun to deconstruct them because if you screwed the roof in, you have to find all the individual screws and unscrew them. If you nailed the roof in, you have to pull a bunch of nails together. Um, the same with if you screwed the corners. And then also, the, because the tongue and grooves go and locks in like this, uh, it can be really tedious to, to plop them out. So um, it's not a fun job to disassemble. If you, at all, you can get someone to come in with a forklift and forklift the bunkie up and move it. If you don't have to go far, that's the way to do it. It'll be a little more expensive, but you'll save yourself like two or three days of just like not fun. <clears throat> Here's a great question from Hilda. Okay. It's possible someone use an insulating wrap on the inside as it's being built, then finish the inside walls with something. So, oh, the, so some people in the winter, they'll kind of hang blankets on the interior of the walls and that's, it provides a lot of insulation value. I thought that's what you're asking. Um, on the inside as it's being built. Yeah, so the, because the inside wall is the outside wall, um, I'm not sure if I can answer that, that question. Um, do you recommend caulking the inside? No, you shouldn't need to do that. Um, maybe sometimes the way the roof hits the uh, the edges, sometimes you'll need to caulk on the outside, but but you shouldn't need to caulk the inside. I would buy a, a t-shirt, hat too. Okay, let's do a poll. Uh, if you would buy a Bunky Life t-shirt or hat, all the money would go to charity, I'm sure. Uh, type in A. If you would never buy that, type in B. A, I would buy that. B, would never buy that. That'd be wonderful. How long does it take to build one? Love how they lock together like a puzzle. Well, we've, in our experience, most of our customers, they really put the nose to the grind and they've got their foundation ready. It's like a two-day, really hard work project, or you can spread it over like four days, but like a weekend with like four people dedicated working on it all day. Great question from Jenny. What kind of kindness flood do you... I think you mean what kind of wood? <laughs> I'm just reading in. I think you mean wood. Uh, it's Nordic spruce um, from Quebec, and uh, some of our kits are, are European spruce, Nordic spruce. Secret word? Haven't mentioned it, Anna de Gorno Macekrin. Oh, here's a great question. Can a bunkie be heated for winter use? Yeah, so my bunkies right now are very steamy, at least the one that I've got heated up. I've got electric heater and an electric heater in there. And I insulated the roof on that one, so it holds heat really well. Oh, roof shingles. Yeah, you can do that. But like we said, do it right, do it once. Consider metal. Can the bunkie be placed on a cement pad 10 by 10? Totally. Yeah, that's uh, most of our kits are around that size. That's totally doable. Uh, can you custom with a kitchenette and washroom? Yes, you can. However, uh, the building code says as soon as you add plumbing, you've got a permit situation, even if it's just a small building like a bunkie. Another alternative is a, is a no permit needed composting toilet like the one that we sell from Sunmar. I would get a ton of rain and hard... Okay, I do too. Uh, I also get hard, brutal rain on the one bunkie, especially because it's in a field. Uh, it will not get in between the boards if you cock the corners and just take extra caution uh, on the on the one side. If you maybe you'll need to cock um, a little bit. Can we put in a skylight? Yes. In my experience, skylights always leak, so you can. Every single person I know that has a skylight is like, yeah, my skylight always leaks, but that's not a normal house. So um, here's a good question. Sherry says, do you have a small kitchen? Blah blah blah. Bar fridge in your Airbnb. Um, I don't, actually. I don't have any of that stuff in my Airbnbs. And we'll, I'm going to talk about Airbnb specifically on Sunday. So we can chat about that. 
Um, yeah. Do you need to get liability insurance? Yes, you do. The good thing about Airbnb, well, I'll go into this in the Airbnb presentation, but Airbnb has its own liability insurance. Jason, does the winner pay for delivery? Yes, delivery is not included. It says that several places all over the website. But we're, we'll be fair if you want delivery. It's not that much. What is the floor inside made from? The same Nordic spruce. It's tongue and groove. Comes together like a hardwood floor. Um, the same same wood as the as everything. Are you going to do a video installing the floor? I, I got one. Uh, if you email me, I can send it to you. I, I did uh, Angie Orange's install this summer, and I put an installation on the floor. It's Basically, it's just like throw insulation sheets in between your floor joists and then put the floor down. It, it honestly added about five minutes to the job. It was it was pretty easy. Oh, Catherine, what instructions come with the bunkie? Two things. One is a video of us step by st or a series of videos, I should say, of us step by step taking you through the build. The other is printed instructions that are last year they were kind of so so. A lot of customers, I think, validly said we could have improved on that area. So. Uh, this year, we've got a commitment to you guys that we're going to have better instructions for all of our kits. And our 2020 instructions, I, I have a peek at them, and they're looking great. And I think we'll go back and redo some of our older instructions so they're a little more step-by-step -step and less like, here's all your pictures kind of thing. Here's a good question. Can the bunkies accommodate a sliding glass door instead of a regular man door? You could. You'd have to retrofit that in and get someone that does that to do it. But yeah, they could, they could do that. Oh, Allison, she's a believer. No hassles, no worries with the metal roof. Do it right. Do it once. Here's a great question. The only things not included is f foundation and roof. Uh, the roof deck boards are included, but the metal or the shingles or whatever you want to match your cottage with, not included. So yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Laura's going into the weeds with insurance. We'll go there on the Airbnb presentation with you, Laura. Height of the 2020 bunkie is about 14 and a half feet high. Under five meters. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm, I'm behind these questions. I'm going to hustle. Mm. Okay. I know a guy. Oh, Amy says, I know a guy that makes great t-shirts. Uh, yeah, if you want to email me, Amy, that'd be wonderful. I'd be, the person that made... I'm going to get my shirt. The um, person that made our... I love our bunkie knife. Like our actual staff shirts. They're cool. Um, I'm going to put it on. But the person that made that, um, I'm going to give her first crack at any of our shirts if, we, if you vote for them. But uh, these are kind of more like, like golf shirts kind of thing. I don't know how much they cost, but they weren't cheap. But it's got the an embroidered logo. It's pretty cool. Da -da -da. Hmm. So. Oh, Monica, do you have a kitchen slash dining bunkie? Monica, stay tuned. This year, we're going to release something that's going to be mind-blowing. That's all I can say about that now. If I was to prep the foundation for the bunkie, what would be the perfect dimension? Greg did down now asks. Well, Greg, it would be the, the dimensions I send you in a PDF prior to your bunkie delivery. Uh, and it would be exactly the dimension. Every kit's a little different. So you would build it to the specs that we send you. And everything will work out great. A. People are saying A. More room than a 100-man brack block. A. What was the question again? A. I think the question was, would you bunkie the shirt and or hat? I think. Yes, a lot of people are saying A. That, that's a legal commitment, guys. You have to legally... Anyone that says A, you owe, you owe us money. <laughs> I'm just joking. Everyone's saying A. That's very kind. Wow, okay. Here's a good question. What has been your favorite client's main use of their purchase of one of your kits? Well, I mean, there's... I always like people that, that think a little outside the box with their bunkies. I mean, the 85% of our people, this is their, this is the problem we solve for them. I've got a cottage or a house. I've got a growing family, but my house is shrinking. Um, can you help us provide space so that we can host everybody? We want to get everybody here for Christmas. We want to get everybody here for Thanksgiving, right? That's the main problem that we solve for our clients. And, you know, 
that's that's the problem itself for me um, and the problem that it continues to solve for others. However, you have people like Dan, if you saw that video of, of someone that, that wanted to just downsize his life and, and he lives in his bucky. Um, we have another story of someone that lives in the backyard. So those are outside the box kind of things. Virginia's story today, I shared today about um, living or creating that really funky she shed, you know, those are always really inspiring. Uh, the story of the grandson and the grandfather building it together. I mean, those are the, those are the the reasons. Ultimately, we do what we do. You know, is is to provide those kind of things that you can talk about. I remember the first monkey I ever built with my wife, my father-in-law, and my father. I'm always going to remember that. You know, there's a picture of me and my two, my father and my father-in-law, like in front of the monkey, and and you know they're not going to be around forever. The monkey's still going to be there, and it's always going to be that connection of building that together. You know, um, so. That was a really long-winded answer to your question, Jay. I apologize. Uh, someone said, B, they're not going to buy the shirts. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, someone said, I'd rather buy a hoodie but not a t-shirt. That's fair. I feel you. Someone says, B, I need a bunkie first. That's fair. <laughs> this is awesome. Sally Woods, B, not even sorry. Love it. Uh, a lot of people saying A. Um, okay, cool. Jackie, if I buy you 48 beers, will you come build my bunkie? Uh, if I had 48 beers, I wouldn't be building any bunkies anytime soon. I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> I'm like a two-beer kind of guy if, at most. Can a bunkie be made on a pre-existing wooden platform? Yeah, if it fits. Yeah. If it, you know, That's basically what the foundation is, is a tiny little wood platform. Oh, this is kind of cool. Have you ever tried aging the look of the wood with steel, wool, and vinegar? In case that's cool. Um, one of our clients last year that um, he actually has, runs an Airbnb. Uh, he burned the wood, which sounds very dangerous. I'm sure he did it safely. He burned the wood. It's got the coolest look ever. I think I showed it last stream, but it's such a such cool. Oh, has anyone ever built a raised bunkie? Yes, they have. Check out uh, on our gallery. There's one in Petrolia that that that's like my mom's bunkie. That she built and it's up kind of like a treehouse style up on a pretty tall it's really cool can you add eavesdrops to rain yes you can very easily there's there's fascia board so you could just put it on skylight solar panels yes an option but i always hear about skylights leaking uh bunky on stilts yeah check out petroleum ontario on the gallery I've answered some of these questions, so I'm not trying to skip anyone's question. Jennifer, I answered this question earlier. All right. Ooh, have you delivered to downtown Toronto? We've delivered to Scarborough. We did, um, we shot a television show uh, in the fall for a television network you've probably heard of, and that comes out in the spring, hopefully. Um, but that was in Scarborough. So we... I mean, we just kind of, I think we dropped it in the front yard and then we had to hand them everything through their tiny little fence to the backyard. Um, Toronto is tricky. I know their bylaws are very... Oh, Murphy bed or not? Yeah, you can totally do a Murphy bed. The, the walls are pretty strong. You could bolt it onto the wall. Totally doable. I think some of our clients have done that. Does delivery company come from Quebec? Oh, um, possibly, yeah. If you're close to Quebec, we could, we could maybe, uh, yeah. Right now, we're buying from our factory in Quebec. We're just buying an, a truck load and dropping it off in Bunky HQ. But I'm, we'll we'll sort that out when you win, okay, Claire? Uh, mouse proof? I would say no, not mouse proof. There isn't a house alive that's mouse proof when they can fit through. Anyone selling you a mouse proof house is selling you a load of crap. Hmm. Hello, I don't understand this question exactly. I apologize. Insulating wrap. You, like so, you could build a second wall, and and finish your inside. So you have like like a traditional build. Like add add basically a second wall within the bunkie. It would take away some of your floor space, and you could add insulation. Well, in my experience though, if you insulate the roof and you in, and you insulate the floorboards, you're about eighty percent of the way there. Um, and you might not find you don't need to insulate the walls in most cases. Oh, yeah, good call. 
Lilac Skylights are the only ones I recommend. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, that was one of the people we talked to early on, uh, and we haven't actually like sealed the deal with, with them as a partner, but we might do that for this summer because they are the best, and they're, and they're from Oakville, I think, so they're good. Overtime wood rots. So what? Yeah. So I recommend a stain by Sanson to protect the wood. You can get that on within the first three months or so. It'll protect the wood, and you need to recoat it every four years. It's a great product. All right. Awesome. Can we order hoodies? We just came up with the idea two minutes ago. So no, but we'll get there. Maybe. Seems like people are interested. How are the kits wrapped? They're kind of shrink wrapped uh, when they show up, um, so they can withstand the weather for a week or two. Um, or three. What is the name of your band? So uh, if you type in DCF wedding music, uh, I think it will come up. That's that's the main the main uh, D DCF wedding music. Um, secret word. Are you gonna do a video on installing the floor? Yes. Answer that one before. Okay. Okay, scrolling down. What about Trios Bunkies? Check out the one in Petrolia, Ontario. That's in a backyard in a pretty kind of urban area. Not urban, but like small town urban. Okay, would you buy a shirt or hat? Yeah, I'd buy a shirt or hat if it went to charity. Sure. This is, a, this is a great sentiment. I, we had about four or five people come by for a tour today. I wish cities and towns would allow these for homeless shelters. Absolutely. I totally agree. Oh, I've got another. <laughs> Cheryl. Metal roof. Absolutely the way to go. Snow slides right off and the sound of rain on metal is hypnotic. If you insulate it, it's not that loud too. Um, and I'm glad we've got another, another uh, metal roof believer. All right, we're almost on an hour. Guys, I, I'm going to make a promise to you. For the rest of the presentations, I want to stick to a tight hour. So um, so the code word tonight is going to be once. O-N-C-E. Once. As in, do it right, do it once. Um, and uh, so the code word is once. And uh, I'll answer a few more. And then at one hour, I'm going to come back and I'll text answer everybody's questions. Because uh, I don't want us to drag on too long. Last time, I think I dragged it a little bit. So... We'll stick to an hour. Thank you so much for your time. And sorry if I didn't get to your questions. Oh, here's a great question. If a permit is required in an area, are there planned drawings available? Yes, we'll, we'll give you the drawings you need. Um, if you need to get them engineered stamps, there, there's a cost to that. And what I found out is that every individual municipality needs its own stamp from its own engineer. I can't just like create a stamp for all of Ontario, unfortunately. So there's a cost to that. Which is another reason why it sucks to have to build, get a permit. Um, it's just like the, the costs start kind of, you know, how those things work. <laughs> so the code word once again, once. O N C E. Do you accept all major credit cards? Yes. Grow cannabis. Go for it. <laughs> Oh, here's a good one. Okay. Took a tour on the site, but couldn't find the extra word. Look inside the 2019 no loft above the door on the inside. That is my... Does the t-shirt come with the... Pr this this t-shirt idea someone just came up with, so maybe. <laughs> I have a couple other fun ideas for little things that we can do. Um, but the t-shirt, if, it, if it's made, maybe I'll throw it in. How about a onesie? We need a Bunky Life onesie. Okay, this is getting extreme. If I boat you in, do you do installs on island? Yes, it'll probably be a little more because of the time involved. Hmm. Lawrence, do you offer a weekend course? Yeah, we should. Do, well, maybe during our open house, we'll build one. Um, you don't. I would say, you, if you've built an IKEA piece of furniture, you don't necessarily need uh, a course. the The videos are very helpful. You can watch them multiple times. You can save them on your phone. So, yeah. Alrighty. I think I'm, I'm running out of time, guys, but it's been a pleasure. I'm sorry I didn't get to everyone's questions. Uh, please tune in. 
on Thursday, which is two days from now, where we'll talk about uh, some other stuff to do with bunkies. <laughs> I forget what this guy... Oh, I, I've got it written down. Hold on. Here's the schedule. Keep me on schedule. So we just did how to build a bunkie, and we're going to talk about bunkie essentials on Thursday. And then next week, leading up to the contest close, earn income on Sunday, the Airbnb, etc. one. Tuesday, how to have the best bunkie on the block. And please, 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 if you can show up for the Thursday the 13th, it would mean the world to me. Um, that's when we talk about kind of the reason why we do what we do. We'll tell a little bit of uh, Carrie and I's personal story. And uh, guys, it's been a pleasure. Have a great night, and we'll see you again in two days from now.